live, local, late breaking. This is KEZI 9 News at 6 with Matt Templeman, Renee McCullough, and Chief Meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. Well, this has unfortunately become an all too familiar scene. Down trees, lines, no power. We've been talking about what goes into the bringing the lights back into your home, but we don't always know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, and KZI 9 News anchor Ariel Yakabazi spent some time with just some of the many line workers working to get people out of the dark. 11 days. How's that been? <laughs> it's been rough. <laughs> Yeah, so we actually lost power like about two weeks ago. Um, so we've been running on generators since then. Snapped poles, uprooted trees. And just snap, snap, snap. Even electricity running through yards. I kept my dogs inside because I was afraid they were going to get, they could have they got killed. It's an all too familiar sight for neighbors who compare their lives after the storm to a different time. This is like living in the front, you know, in the frontier. Um, most of us uh, on about four hours of sleep. But it's easy to forget what's going on behind the scenes of this storm. When crews with the Emerald People's Utility District aren't out in the field, some are sleeping at the office. Others are answering your calls, Hi, this is Jessica. Can I help you? all with the same goal. Uh, they're working tirelessly, you know, 18-hour uh, days, uh, very little sleep, and they're going to not rest until power is restored for everybody. Many are comparing it to the 2019 ice storm, a.k.a. snowpocalypse, where a small number of 80 poles went down. This time around, though, we have approximately 300 poles that we know of that are down. So that this makes it three to four times of the infrastructure devastation that we had in 2019. And nobody remembers a storm that badly in our lifetime, in at least my lifetime. 300 poles downed and thousands more damaged. Something that's also hard to forget are the people working around the clock to get you back online. I think exciting is just being able to restore power for people and get the lights back on and know you did something good for the community that day. Ray Yeager is a lineman apprentice with EPUD. For about two years, he's been learning the ins and outs of the trade. Stocking trucks, cleaning trucks, getting material ready for the job, getting the jobs lined out, and then just building the job, whether it's putting up poles or doing underground or whatever we're doing that day. The recent ice storm is unlike anything he's seen during his time as an apprentice. Have you seen anything like that in your apprenticeship at all? Uh, not yet for me. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Lots of broken stuff. Along with Ray, EPUD's operations manager, Mark Raymer, says they brought in even more crews to help. My position, I have about 49 people on a day to day basis, so 20 linemen and some tree crews. Um, and then I won't say overnight, but within a few days, I have 130 more employees to deal with. So uh, it, it's pretty amazing. The work Mark and Ray have to do on a daily basis isn't a walk in the park. Uh, mostly just running out, looking at what's broken, where we can put up the most wire to get the most amount of customers on and at one time, and then just going down the line looking for more issues we can solve. That's putting it lightly. Having almost 550 square miles of a mostly rural service territory means Raymer's crews have their work cut out for them. We have three off-road machines in here that are that are that are dealing with with poles and wire that are in inaccessible places due to the wetness and and all that stuff. But that's how many poles that are in a really inaccessible places. But what does that work really look like? This is a long haul. This is. This is hard. This, people don't realize it's like you, your hands start to hurt. You're, you know, you, you start to get physically, you know, almost sick because of, of the lack of sleep. So as I found out, it takes a while to get power back on and get everything just fully operational. I mean, I just spoke with the crew who was working on this power pole and they said it takes about two days just to get all the arms back on it and to just get everything fully operational again. It's just a really lengthy process. And as I'm out here, people are trying to get that power. There's a power line running into this area that's in someone's yard. So just trying to get it out of the way and make sure everybody's safe. It's just a 
lengthy process. You can see crews still working in this area. And even if they get people back online in this neighborhood, it's still going to take a while to fully repair everything. Watch your hood. Hey. You hear a lot of yelling that nobody's angry at anybody, but these loud trucks, um, these guys are absolutely amazing. They've been at it a long time and still keep a nice attitude. And uh, they know they're in it for the long haul. This isn't their first rodeo. And you know, a lot of jobs have heights that they deal with. Some people have, have trucks and equipment and we have all of that plus electricity. So it makes it pretty exciting. On top of the long days and long nights filled with this tough labor, Raymer says something else that's added to the stress of his line of work. Wire theft, we send a crew out to do, to do a job, you know, Three days ago, the wire was laying on the ground and off the road to make the public safe and dead. And then we send a crew out there to go repair it, thinking the wire is there. They just need to put new arms and poles up. And now uh, the wire's gone. My, my uh, estimate is between 30 and 40,000 feet is missing. So yeah, that's the frustrating part. Because that's not supposed to look like that, I'm guessing. That could be up to thousands of dollars for the company. Stolen wire also means neighbors might be waiting even longer to get their power back on. I go to Southern New Hampshire University, and so the power lines taking out the internet and stuff kind of made it hard for me to be able to do my homework on time. We're, we're all in the same boat. Now, as we're seeing, nearly two weeks of backbreaking work, that can take a toll. And even linemen like Ray aren't immune to the impacts of severe weather. My house, we lost it for nine days, I believe, maybe 10. I got a one-year-old and a three-year-old and so yeah it was stressful but we were able to get a generator from a friend when they got their power back on but something raymer wants to make sure everyone knows these guys are not robots they're actual human beings that have families and they're tired and uh their hands hurt their backs hurt and they know they got another week or so of slogging it out so just be patient with them as i've also found a little compassion goes a long way Okay, everybody here in, uh, in this neighborhood, we're all in the same boat. So it's like, you know, we can complain and, and get frustrated, but, you know, they're, they're working on it. Be patient. We're working hard. It's just long days, long hours. Reporting in Lane County, Ariel Yakabazi, KEZI 9 News. Ariel, thank you. And thanks to these, uh, these line workers' hard work, power is quickly being restored across the county. EPUD expects most power to be on for their customers by Monday, but again, a few might have to wait until next Saturday. And EPUD is one of the many local utilities updating their social media regularly, so you can follow them there. You can also watch our newscasts or go to KEZI.com for more information.